It was 1954, the Brown versus Board of Education case. Linda and Terry Lynn Brown made their way to the bus that will transport them to school. Each morning, eight-year-old Linda Brown had to negotiate the hazardous terrain of a railroad yard to catch a bus to a school some 25 blocks away from her home. Segregation in Topeka, Kansas prevented her from attending an all-white facility that was just a few blocks away from her home. So in 1951, her parents, along with 12 other families, they sued the Topeka Board of Education and they demanded an end to racial separation. Because Linda came first alphabetically, she became the nickname for this litigation. Shepherded by NAACP team, the case took three years to wind its way to the Supreme Court. Now in one of the far-reaching rulings of the century, the court found segregation in public schools unconstitutional. The unanimous decision proclaimed that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. However, the victory was far from won, as Southern politicians vowed to defy the ruling. The South will not abide or obey this legislative decision by a political court, said Senator James Eastland of Mississippi. Now, the battle lines were drawn for the nation's long civil rights struggle. You see, the Brown v. Board of Education was landmark because it overturned the separate but equal approach to public schooling. Segregated schools, as well as public restrooms and transportation, drinking fountains, restaurants, came about as the result of Jim Crow laws. This case also held that race-based segregation of children into separate but equal schools violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, and it's unconstitutional. What you may not know is that over one-third of states segregated their schools by law. At the time of Brown v. Board of Education ruling, 17 southern and border states, along with the District of Columbia, required their public schools to be racially segregated. Also, Arizona, Kansas, New Mexico, and Wyoming, they all permitted segregation. Brown v. Board of Education started off as five separate cases. In 1950 and 1951, lawsuits were filed in Kansas, also South Carolina, Virginia, Delaware, and District of Columbia. The Supreme Court consolidated the cases into one in 1952. Also, the lower courts all ended in defeat. In Delaware, the court found that the two black children named in the court case were entitled to attend the white school in their communities. And in Kansas, the court conceded that segregation had harmful and lasting effects. The plaintiffs took great personal risk to be part of this case. After the lawsuits were filed, plaintiffs lost their jobs, as did members of their families. They also had their credit cut off, and they received death threats, and they even had their homes riddled with gunshots. You may not know that Thurgood Marshall argued the case for the plaintiffs. This was only one of 32 cases Thurgood appeared in front of the Supreme Court for. He later became the first black justice on the Supreme Court, serving from 1967 to 1991, and the U.S. government largely backed Marshall's position. Brown v. Board of Education was a unanimous decision, but the case had a sequel. The backlash was widespread. Also, U.S. schools today still remain widely segregated. Though there is still a lot of work to be done regarding equality, this court case got the ball rolling in a legal way and had a huge positive impact on integration. Keep in mind, it wasn't that long ago. Well, like, subscribe, be a genius, think for yourself. This is a Marilogic channel.